September 11th, 2001, we all remember the Twin Towers exploding into dust and crashing to the ground. Sometimes we forget that a third building collapsed later that afternoon. That building was a 47-story skyscraper called Building 7. Building 7 was not hit by a plane. It was damaged by falling debris from the North Tower. Several floors caught on fire. After burning for several hours, Building 7 collapsed into a pile of rubble slightly larger than its footprint. In November 2008, a new video of the collapse became available. It shows the collapse of Building 7 from a closer vantage point and in better resolution than the older video. I want to analyze this video using tools available to everybody, a video editor, a spreadsheet, and high school physics. The goal is to determine whether the building drops at freefall acceleration, and if so, for how long. The new video is not steady, and the camera zooms in and out. The best way to time the collapse is to use fixed reference points on other buildings and time how long it took for Building 7 to drop floor by floor. We can enter the data into a spreadsheet and plot the graph. Here we have stills, or snapshots, taken from the video. Each one is labeled with the elapsed time and the number of floors dropped. The smallest drop I could absolutely be sure of was about one-fourth of a floor, the distance from the starting position to the next row of windows. Thus, the subsequent measurements are 1.25, 2.25, and so on. At the very end, we can no longer see the floors, so we have to measure pixels and convert that to floors at 12 pixels per floor. When we plot the data, it looks very much like free fall for the first three seconds or so. Afterwards, there is little or no acceleration. The collapse finishes at an almost constant velocity. Fitting a curve to the data by a least squares method fits the first three seconds of data almost exactly. The best fit was 9.6 meters per second squared, which is 2% less than freefall. The green dots are the actual data, and the dashed red line is the extended curve from the least squares fit. We can see that something happened after about three seconds. What happened? If an object falls at 9.6 meters per second squared, all but 2% of the force necessary to hold it up is gone. If the building accelerates less, there must be more upward force. If the building falls at a constant velocity, then there is only a tiny bit less upward force than necessary to hold it up. Thus, after three seconds, our graph shows a large amount of force opposing the fall of Building 7. The only explanation is that the supporting structure of several floors was destroyed simultaneously. The building dropped at nearly free fall until unbroken floors hit the ground. Then the intact floors resisted being crushed by the rest of the building. If it fell freely for three seconds, that would be about 12 floors. A two-second free fall would be about five floors. Here is a real controlled demolition of a building called the Landmark Tower. We can analyze its collapse similarly. We find... <laughs> find it dropped at free fall for almost three seconds. The landmark tower was less than half the height of Building 7, so the collapse lasts only about four seconds. Nevertheless, both buildings dropped at almost the same acceleration for the first few seconds of their collapse. Then they dropped at roughly constant velocity. In the case of the landmark tower, we know the supporting structures of several floors were destroyed. In the case of Building 7, it is thought by many that fire caused the collapse after other damage left the building weakened. Would a fire take out the supporting structures of several floors all at the same time? Or would a fire cause a progressive collapse? Here is a simplified drawing of Building 7. If fire heats up steel beams to their failure point, the beams would first reach a temperature at which they bend and give way. Beams in a fire would lose some of their strength well before they lost all of their strength. Therefore, the building would drop, but not at freefall acceleration. In addition, a fire would be very likely to weaken some beams before others, leading to a part partial or progressive collapse. Take a look at a real fire collapse. Notice how the collapse is partial, uneven, and nowhere near free fall acceleration. The yep. Shit! Still oh. 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 
This video of a building in Holland is the closest example anyone can find of a building dropping anything like Building 7 because of a fire. Of course, there are many examples of buildings dropping like Building 7 because of a controlled demolition. Shit! Oh! Oh! Shit! Oh! 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 Oh!